this time on Highway to Hell. Fire up, let's go. An unprecedented mission in the wake of disaster. A slammed in wreck. Watch out. With no room for error. Hard right, hard right. Whoa. Tests. Stop. Jamie's team. Plotted everywhere. And an army mobilizes. The water is moving up quite quickly. One, two, three, four. Against the elements. In southern British Columbia. Traffic is rolling for the first time in days. Highway 7 reopened to allow for the hundreds of people stranded in hope to finally get out. It's a slow go as vehicles were caught on the wrong side of mudslides and they're all trying to get home. Dispatch to Highway 7. We're in day number, I think, five of our natural disaster. Operator James Luke heads to a large-scale recovery. We're going out tonight to clean up some cars. That will shut the road down again. We have a very short time to move vehicles off of a section of highway that was affected by the flooding. Days ago, the water. a devastating weather event. It's just unbelievable. Trapped vehicles on. This is the slide. And off the road. There's cars littered all through here. We're lucky no one lost lives in these slides. It could have been a lot worse. Tonight, James is on cleanup duty. Everybody's just getting lined up. With an army of tow trucks. We literally have to move 200 vehicles in four hours. of cleanup. We want to try and take as many vehicles as we can in as little time as we can. After a mudslide is about to launch. To get everything cleared up, we need to close the only available highway. With slide debris cleared, the vehicles blocking the road already removed. Ones on the shoulders and off the road are the mission tonight. Holy, there's a lot of trucks. Leading the operation, reliable towing owner, Suki Manj. When I was a police officer, my whole life I've done jobs to help people. After days surrounded by water, Holy. Suki's family property escaped ruin. We managed to get through it, so we were lucky. Tonight, with more than 20 tow trucks. We have four hours to get this done. Do the work the best to your abilities. Authorities have given Suki a tight window. Don't feel rushed, but we do have a time crunch. To clear more vehicles than his team has ever attempted. Once we get going, I'm hopeful that we'll get it done. seen anything like this. I don't know what to expect, to be honest. They got 
out single lane alternating. Late October. On a feeder road to Highway 7. The driver is okay. Answering the call. Let's go have a look. In mission towing's 50 ton heavy, operator Andy Cullum. Holy. Look at that truck. It's pretty bad. Definitely a stressful situation. Hauling downhill, the dump truck careen. Feed away from a plunge into water. At least he's not in the river. I've been on this corner more than once. It's pretty much in the exact same spot every time. Joining Andy. You miss it, don't you? Yeah, I do. Recovery legend. The dump truck flipped over. The trailer went in against the dump truck. Ken DePerrin. Hook this. Yeah, see what you got there. What do you think, Andy? I'm just going to pull ahead here, drag it straight. OK. After we sold the company, getting out in a tow truck, I've been missing it. Try that, Andy. I like the bigger, heavier jobs, going out and helping. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> For years, let it down. Andy grew his skills under Ken. Oh. Before, that was close. And after, the DePerrin family sold Mission Towing. It's always good to learn from Ken when he's around. On tonight's wreck. So you want me to park over there on Keystone then? Yeah. Firefighters are standing by. There's a lot of people waiting. You don't want to hold them up any more than you have to. OK, let's give her a shot, yeah. Want to clear over there? Attacking the trailer first. Go a little more. Ken keeps a close eye. A more. On the dump truck. It looks close. We gotta be careful we don't puncture the fuel tanks. That's the trailer pivots. Hold it a sec. Hold it. The threat grows too close for comfort. We noticed the back end wants to go in toward the truck on our spin. We got to drag the back end over. Do you want to run another line out? Yeah, maybe in between the duels sort of thing? Yeah, I think so. To gain more control. OK, yep. They add another rig point. Hook on both sides of it and pull it sideways first away from the truck. Try that, Andy. Looking. Ken strategy. Okay. We're clear. We're clear. Gets the first piece. Okay. Get this one out of the way. Okay. Ready to haul. We're off the road. But the real challenge is still on its side. Trailer's not that heavy, but the truck is. Now that's a lot harder to pull up. Where do you want to go? Let's chain this. Decades of experience. Got to chain this box to the frame. Have taught Ken these units need something more. Quick delivery. Foxes on dump trucks are only partially attached. Okay. I always tie the box to the frame when I'm operating a dump truck. Pull it. Otherwise, the box opens up when you go to lift it. And that's why you chain them before you operate them. Okay, good. Got her. 
We'll back up to it and uh, flop it over. Okay. And he lines up. Keep coming. Really great to have Ken there to help coordinate. For the 25,000 pound flip. Once you start pulling, anything can happen. Okay, everybody clear? Let's try it and see what we got. I'm gonna get out of the way of this. Floods. Come back a little bit more here. Ken and Andy. Okay, everybody clear? Let's try it and see what we got. Fight 25,000 pounds. It's coming. I think she's taking. She's taking. Of a sideways crash. Do you want the tires to bite in so it uprights, not slides along the ground? There, your box just come in too. Take her away. the way Whoa. Dump trucks come over with a good bang. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Hours ago, the dump truck and its trailer lost control. You got it. Now Ken can call it a night. Lots of room, Andy. It went very well. If I can get out on the odd job, that keeps me happy. <laughs> keeps me going. Kilometers northeast. On the Coquihalla. Well, it's probably going to take a few to get that thing out. Dispatched from Hope. It looks like it just happened. Rotator is in inspection right now, so can't use it. Jamie Davis. We know it's off-road, and we know it's down deep in a ditch. Heads to the call. I'm just gonna get back in the swing of things. With operator Greg Mulligan. It's been a long summer back in Ireland, and I just wanna get back onto some big wrecks. There he is. tractor trailer went in this ditch fast and hard it wasn't uh, a nice easy in there hello luckily the driver is okay it's a bit of a delicate job because we've got to come out of the bank with it on an angle how much weight do you have in there uh, five thousand four thousand left okay one mistake could increase the damage 20 minutes out. Is a 45 ton classic Holmes. Be on here, Jeannie. And mechanic Brian Rash. The old guy calls and needs some help. He knew it was not a job for one. We had to have two wreckers. Back on scene. Tough, man. Jamie and Greg waste no time. If, uh, still doesn't hold air, we'll have to put a hotline to the trailer. Prepping for the recovery. Get the resistance down. We've got to worry about obstacles. This thing has some big issues. This is rock right here. You can see it touching the oil pan. Definitely got himself well in there. But we've got to dig that out of there.
There you go. Ooh, come on. Here, I'll push it out. So that's good. The roadside landscaping is done. Here you go again. On the southbound side. With more pole power now on scene. Hey, Brian. The battle to the blacktop is on. We're gonna run two lines, just straight lines. Cool, okay. From the general, two long lines will maneuver the transport as the brakes are kept aired up by the 25-ton peak. We want to bring it out the easiest to come back onto the roadway. The less the slope is, the better. Pull them out then. I don't really want to pull it against the bank. I want to just pull it backwards. Hey, Brennan. Running traffic control. We're coming into this well prepared. We're ready to get to work. Do you want to steer the truck? Just steer it with you guys? Yeah. Jamie's stepson, Brandon. Nothing better for a young guy to do than steer a truck without any power. Ready? Here we go! Gets an extra assignment. Crank the wheel to the right. Right. Using brute force to wrangle the inoperable rig. Turn it back this way a bit. I love doing hard work. I don't like to stand there. It's nice to get back right into the swing of things. But navigating the incline. Hard right, hard right. Coming out with that kind of an angle, we're gonna have to be careful of that. We're gonna have to watch that. One wrong move. Not too much, not too much. And could end up in a lot of trouble. Stop, stop. On the coke. A big rig. Hard right, hard right. Down a steep ditch. Not too much, not too much. Stop, stop. Starting up. As Jamie and his team eyeing all angles. This truck's brand new. We don't want more damage. Okay. Take the brakes off for a minute. Undo yours. One point of concern. You know, I don't want it climbing the bank so much. Lies underneath the trailer. At this kind of an angle, low to the ground fairings, you're gonna belly rub against the side of the bank. An innovation of modern transport. They're pushing the air around the rear axles of the trailer. Fairings are all about aerodynamics. Fairing panels, lower drag, cutting fuel costs. Fairings just like anything else on a truck. They're worth money. You don't want to damage them. The trucking industry, there's a lot of differences in this business versus what it was before and what it is now. Today. Take off this line here. Yeah. And we'll just put one line on this side. Yeah. With the fairings inches from the slope, Jamie adapts. We're gonna go to one line, and we're gonna try to winch on this side so that we're not dragging it up the bank. We we'll want it to go long. One more crack at the kitty. So we're gonna run out quite a bit of line now and try to get it to skirt down here peel out more line to get a better angle. That's good. See how nice and gentle of an angle it is here? Yeah. My main thing is we're not pulling this way, we're pulling long. Yeah, gotcha. The 45-ton heavy hitter winds up. Okay, move the feet ahead a bit. HR 130 and Greg. Keep the wheels unlocked. All I'm doing is uh, supplying air to the tractor trailer to release the brakes. A little more.
More to the right. A little bit. Yeah. We don't want to have damage to the unit. I've got to keep an eye on everything in this job. Crank it right. Hard right now. Okay, stop. Done. Jamie's team. Good job steering there. We made it happen. Lands the victory. Greg will get the tractor out of the way. Customer's taking his own trailer. Yeah, now we're cooking. This is the first wreck I've been on since I came back from Ireland. It's good to be back with the gang. damage good to go we go do these jobs and you know we're, we're hitting them out of the park oh she's all done now three weeks later Team Reliable is in an epic hustle. A little more, a little more, a little more. The only route to the coast is shut down. Once that's gone, I can grab that one, grab that one, and be gone. For an extraordinary cleanup. I'm pretty sure there hasn't been a time where a company's been asked to move 200 vehicles in a four hour period. I'm haul that Dodge and that Chevy right there. This is a first for me. I think the most we ever moved at once was maybe 12. Days after mud slides. The people were lucky to get out alive. Suki stares down the toughest recovery tonight. I just can't imagine the fear. These are very scary events. Joining the boss. Straighten it out a bit more. In Mission Towing's 50-ton record is Andy. This is the first time I've had Suki work with me on a job, so learning what each other can do. And we gotta pull that one up to there now, too. Okay. From the heavy, two doubled lines. We'll try to free the vehicle from thousands of pounds of debris. This one's in there pretty good. Trees, everything tied up in it. I'm uh, rigging up a snatch block. My main concern is my team. Wherever they need help, I'm willing to jump in. Big cables aren't light. No. Hardest working boss I ever met. The rigging is set. Let's see if we get it picked up. There's so much weight on that thing, you wouldn't believe. When it's as hard of a pull, this is when you start breaking stuff. That's what you're nervous about. Highway 7, the aftermath of mudslides. Yeah. As Suki and his team in a high stakes crunch. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's all that mud that's stuck to this thing. There's a lot of challenges you don't normally get. There it goes. It's bringing it up. Free of debris. Oh, so that's the rear? That's the rear. I didn't even notice. The pickup truck. This is unbelievable. That's crazy. It's a sobering reminder 
of when disaster struck. I try not to think about mudslides. And you got enough going on to worry about all of a sudden a mountain crashing you. But the recovery team Get to work. has made the best of the situation. Like a pro, I got three for one. Clearing hundreds of vehicles in just four hours. Good work. To see the people that work together to get this job done is pretty impressive. interested in knowing if there is some type of a record that we might have set here. To the east. Jamie's LA rotator. That truck means so much to me. He's back at base. After a close call near floods in the Fraser Valley. We didn't get any water damage. I'm just thanking my lucky stars on this one. But to the west, in the city of Abbotsford, forecast is unsettling. We have more now on the flooding situation in British Columbia. Officials warn residents to prepare for heavy rain and strong winds. The army has been brought in to help. Residents of Abbotsford are hoping for the best, but really bracing for the worst. On high ground. I'm a little nervous, actually. Jamie's niece, Jasmine and her husband, Rob. There isn't a single thing right now that we have control over, and it's just uncertainty. See their hometown from above. It is completely covered in water. Days ago, Jasmine's father, Jason, was evacuated from the flood zone below. I'm most concerned about my dad losing his house. Earlier this year, Jasmine tied the knot on Jason's property. The word home means to me a, a safe place of sanctuary. Generations of families that have been out on that prairie it's a place where your family gathers, your friends gather. It's home. So sad. Everything is in the hands of Mother Nature. And I'm hoping she doesn't hit us harder. With clouds rolling in. We are picking some RVs, bringing them to the main yard. MSA Towing's Kerpal Banwait races to help a local business. I feel sorry about them because it just happened sudden. Days ago, he flooded pretty much everywhere. The RV rental lot suffered a major fire. The fire could get worse. Another blow to the community. There's just the ashes and a few metal pieces. That's all you can see, nothing else left. Luckily, many units were spared. At least nobody got hurt. That could have been way worse. For owner James Epp, Serving customers is top priority. 
How are you doing? Well, we have a lot of bookings yeah. coming up. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I like to see that. The fire department, they saved the building that we're standing in. The way the community came through, it was amazing. We're all stronger together. Now, with more rain on the way, MSA is relocating. That's good. There we go. Several units vulnerable to the elements. Okay, I'll do this. You get your stuff for this drive shop. So I want to get it done the much we can today. To higher ground. Bingo. It's concerning because people are scared enough already. Keep going. Good. That's why I have a second person with me, so we can move them quicker. All good? Yeah, all good. Okay, let's roll up. It's going to be nightmare if we are going to get more flood. On the way. At dusk. Holy. Abbotsford Police Department's... Pretty wild, eh? Constables Paul Walker and Jody Thomas. Significant cave-in damage, quite catastrophic. Check a unique problem on a main north-south route. It's totally buckled. That portion of the roadway has a lot of styrofoam underneath it as an engineering product. Called geofoam, the product is used as a stable base for roadways. The styrofoam, it doesn't expand and contract, it's more solid. It's all flooded. But then, water overwhelmed the road. All this water is under there, and that styrofoam being solid pushes up. I think it's gonna be a long time here. It's crazy, hey? It's not a simple fix. But not far away. We got more equipment arriving by the second. On the Trans-Canada Highway. Look out, guys. The Canadian Armed Forces. That's the Tiger Dam. Have mobilized. The Army is here right now to put up a flood mitigation wall. Against a rising waterway near the road. When we first came to this site, over there, the graffiti on the wall was clearly visible. Now some leathers are almost covered. If the river starts to rise significantly, the low point is Highway 1. That's just wild. In Abbotsford, on Highway 1, the Canadian Armed Forces we're using water to push back the water. Are helping to fill. Close the gap. One, two, three, one. A spectacular barrier with more than 10,000 liters of water. Four bag, and then we push it up. Sandbag the bottom. Called a tiger dam. More than 100 meters long. The barricade stands against a rising river. The military, in a time that we're going through right now, to have their services and their skill is amazing. Holy mother, friggin' ran. Yeah, it's coming down hard. The unknown right now is how much rain is gonna fall and how that's gonna look for Abbotsford. What's it like up through Merritt? 300 kilometers northeast. Yeah, it's, it's a sad state of events. The ravaged town of Merritt has been evacuated for days. Seeing all the devastation, you kind of feel helpless. 
I feel for the people that are directly affected. We're gonna get this pickup truck out, get it wiggled out of the way, out onto the road. Reliable's Dylan Greenwood leads a daunting cleanup effort. The flood damaged vehicles, we're picking them up slowly as we can get to them. Watch me. Yep. And try to salvage as best we can, get them back on the road. Went really well. Get the trailer out next. Hopefully that comes out just as nice. One hour north. Watch out for the cat. The city of Kamloops is a refuge for two of Merritt's 7,000 evacuees. It's difficult for everybody, I would imagine. Today, Jenny and Brian Wheeler are getting ready to go home. Not sure what to expect. Now we wonder and worry and not really know what we're gonna go back to. The ground's still soft all around. Back in Merritt. A lot of devastation in this little town. Operator Rooster Merkley. I've never seen anything like this. Is dispatched to do what he can. It does weigh on you knowing that there's so many people that have lost their livelihoods, their homes. Damage to the town is estimated at $100 million. All over town, we have our work cut out for us. Now on scene with operator Curtis Kristen. Can you bring us a chain, two hooks? Team Reliable faces a trailer full of backcountry toys. Buried in debris and God knows what else. To avoid the tow truck getting stuck. Stop. They need to stay far back on the road. With the river silt that's come through, everything's covered in a thick layer of mud. Let's do this. Nice and tall, buddy. With 5,000 pounds on the line, 70 feet from the truck, Getting lift is a struggle. Wait one second, Kurt. We didn't really want to drive in, but just need a little pick on it. See if that's going to give us enough oomph to be able to get this thing out. Now hooked to the under lift. Okay, it's a good thing I'm here. spins now doing salvage work in a flood damaged yard the mud is uh, pretty thick there's not much traction to be had guess we're not driving it out now it's definitely a very tiring daunting dirty task it's so soft the truck's just sinking a flat deck comes to the rescue we're gonna use it to recover ourselves out of here. Let's free wheel it. Dylan sets up for a double duty pull. Give it a little throttle. Straighten your wheels, buddy. You always gotta think on your feet. Nice and slow. There's a ton of work to be done in this community. We're helping as best we can with the tow trucks. Get things moving.
minutes away. Not sure what to expect. Residents, Brian and Jenny. Oh my God. Get their first look at their home since the floods hit. Assess damage, appliance, electric, sewer, and gas. No. 25th wedding anniversary next year. We we're gonna have a great big party. Oh, oh my God. I don't wanna go in there. Oh. What do you do? It's a very hard struggle for a lot of people. It is a big mess, but we're very lucky. We survived. We got out with our family. That's the important thing. All we can do is help when we're asked to do the right things and be good neighbors. Two hours southwest. Just before noon, we had about two feet of water that rose in about 45 minutes. In Abbotsford, the rain has let up. And the decision was made to add an extra layer of protection across the highway. Three feet high, stretching across Highway 1, secured by sandbags that weigh more than 2,000 pounds. This is basically preventing more flooding in the farms in the highway area. The Tiger Dam has safeguarded Constable Walker's community. Seeing that the water hasn't gone over the dam is a really good feeling. Minutes away. The goal for us today is to get out there and try to assess damage, if any. Jason and Merv are in the flood zone. Man in there. For the first time since Jason was forced to leave his home. Jason's like family. Water's still flowing. So it's basically like be a shoulder to cry on. See how high on the pole it was? It was pretty devastating. Finally, quite a bit of water in here. They reached Jason's driveway. You know, it's a family property, and we need to make sure it's okay. It was up, yeah, quite a bit. That's as far up as the water got to. Very thankful that it didn't get water in the electrical. I'm gonna check into the shop. Yeah, everything's as I left it. Yeah, we're dry. We fared really well. We're quite fortunate that this event hasn't hit us as hard as it's hit others. Well, the shop didn't get water. The house didn't get water. No. So we'll be good. But the relief is bittersweet. Jason's house was spared from the flood water, but literally not even a block away, there's houses that were four or five feet underwater. And it's very sad. The yeah, aggressive Tony is trying to do what they can. The sense of community is there, definitely. You can't complain about this. No. Delivery. Oh. 
is an all-out battle cup for Jason and Merv. Oh, holy. This time on Highway to Hell. Boy. Jamie's LA Rotator oh. leads a snowy tug of war. Wind her down. The only mountain highway. Right out. Tests. All the way back there. Team Green's young blood. Be careful. And a waterlogged delivery. Oh. Is an all-out battle oh. for Jason and Murr. Oh, holy. In southern British Columbia. Highway 3, here we come. A 40 ton rotator. That was Jamie Davis right there, wasn't it? And Jamie Davis. Join traffic finally flowing through the Cascade Mountains. Being able to get the truck out and getting back on the road is really good. just on flowing across the highway. Earlier this month, a devastating weather event. He's toast. Destroyed more than 50 kilometers of highway. It's surreal and it's hard to even describe. We were so far away from the reality of our normal world. With Highway 3 now reopened, Jamie can head hours east. To a mountain wreck. We've got a call for a major recovery job. We're talking about some big, heavy winching. A nice looking peak you got there, bud. For Jamie's prized iron, that served the LA Fire Department. This rotator's 27 years old and it's my favorite truck. I can't wait to do some recoveries in the snow. The cold climate is a whole new game. I heard it was snowing like crazy. On a challenging road. Highway 3 is a pretty ominous route. Lots of curves, hills, black ice. It's not like the Coke to go over, especially if you don't know it. With two other passes still closed. There's lots of cars for essential traffic only. The punishing southern route is the only choice. It's like running the gauntlet. It's life and death on that highway. On the road behind Jamie, they're never getting ugly out there. A storm is rolling in. We're not getting out there, man. Keep the momentum up, Randall. Keep the momentum up. It's bad news for truckers. Oh, we got a load of organic oats on today. Hauling vital goods. This is not our normal route. One of the toughest stretches is a climb to Sunday Summit, an elevation higher than the Coquihalla. Come on, we can do this, we can do this. And we're all coming to a stop. Not looking good here. Answering the call to duty. Oh, it's good to see a green truck up here. Quiring just pulled up behind me. Is a 50 ton quiring towing record. Tow truck's coming around again. With an unusual face behind the wheel. It 
Lance, a big wrecker from what I'm used to driving. Gord wasn't available. The Highway 3. You go in the biggest truck you can. Called on to pull big rigs near Sunday Summit. Carrie Quarry will need all the power he can get. My oldest son, Carrie, unfortunately, he's about to be thrown into the frying pan. Three. We got about uh, six inches of snow here. It's all on carry to get the only route through the mountains clear. A little bit of snowshed protocol on Highway 3, even though they don't have snowshed there. Okay, we'll just kind of crest the hill yeah. and pull off right at the top. Yeah. yeah. I'm not driving. It's my son. I'm pretty stressed out because I can only be in so many places at one time. For days, Al has been with his army of dozers, helping restore track in the Fraser Canyon. I made a phone call to a friend of mine that works in the rail industry and mentioned I got a bunch of cows. It wasn't two hours later, we're headed northbound. To the south, Al's 26-year-old son has more than 100,000 pounds on the hook. The spin on Highway 3 are challenging because it's a narrow road and there's not much room. How's that A-stack for me? You make it up? No, oh, he's getting towed up. Guys want to be a plow all the time. Whatever way those wheels are going, that's the way he's going. Minus 14. Jamie's LA rotator. Well, this truck is really not used to the snowy weather. Nears its destination. Over the last few years, we've been slowly buying some recovery trucks. Also en route. Ah, beautiful, my friend. A second heavy hitter. Long ago, we bought the Kenworth, which has a 40-ton wrecker on it. A little bit nervous. Rolling to meet Jamie. There's high expectations when you drive the heavies. Rookie operator, Brock Warrington. I always wanted to do this. But now that I got my foot in the door, I'm just going to take it day by day. The wrecker business is new to him. There's definitely people that can handle this kind of stuff, and there's people that can't. Quite the ball, I'm tired. Bending in there pretty good. Now on scene, Brock and Jamie. Well, you got the snow all cleared, eh? Join a third record. Yeah, I'll try and make things a little easier. And operator Rick Wood. The challenge to this is whether it's going to come out there properly when we're pulling it out. In a snowstorm, the transport lost the road, pummeling into the ditch. 
They've dug it out as much as they can. Snow compacts, it becomes a brick wall. When he hit the brakes, boom, and everything went that way. One thing about this job is the truck's brand new. Not bad damage, really. This big bumper here took a lot of the impact. But behind the tractor... We think there's 60,000 in the container. ...is no ordinary trailer. I hear it's heavy, heavy, heavy. The unit is made of steel. It's not a normal trailer, it's a sea can container loaded with peat moss on a chassis. I don't know what the total weight would be, but, you know, a good 80,000 or over. We're really at capacity pulling this thing out, even with three big trucks. It's gonna be tough, it's a lot of weight. Good luck. We'll find the ditch. On a mountain highway. Not in crash of the cold weather. A heavy metal wreck. Well, that frame's pretty delicate, but see the container? Yeah, the container eyelet. Yeah, the heel get on there. Yeah. Is an extraordinary target for Jamie's team. Yours, to hook it in the same place, but on that rail on the right side. A fully loaded container with peat moss. It's gonna require some big iron to pull it out. Designed for shipyard movement. Containers are very strong. They take a lot of abuse. Unique pull points. Right through there, through the frame. This side. Yeah. We'll give Jamie's crew. Right around the frame. And then go hook into that container. A fighting chance. I did, these chassis are pretty weak. Well, they'll flex a lot. Yeah. Rigging points on a container. They're more durable. He'll lift on that side. Dry van or reefer trailer would not take the stress like a container would. The LA rotators. I'll have to get a chain up there. First mountain test. We're gonna have to get up to the container here so they can hook up to a top point so that I can hang on to it from flipping over. We'll be taking the lead against a total weight of 110,000 pounds. Okay, so that's pull out right there. There's a lot of physics to this. There's a lot of calculations. All these things add up to one big puzzle. To the west. Keep her going. Carry. Don't stop. Keep it going. There's no room for error. Highway 3 right now is the only highway connecting Vancouver to the rest of Canada. Busy, busy, yes. So I gotta do my part to keep it open. All downhill now. This road was never expected to have the volume of trucks that it's on it today. A second blockage. Come has two times the normal volume of traffic. Not even inching along right now. At a halt. That's why you keep that supply chain moving. You're dealing with the whole West Coast for grocery service. Time is of the essence. Yeah, this is not a good place to be. But getting down. Is there any traffic coming uh, westbound up the falls? To the problem. Okay, thank you, driver. Is a whiteout minefield. Uh, you see movement up ahead of the line here, westbound. Backing down. On these narrow roads, it's tricky. You gotta use the no post for a reference point. Windy. 30k corners in some areas. It's very dangerous. It's been very scary. We're moving out of your way there. Truck. As a parent, I'm always concerned. I had to put a son up there. 
Yeah, no, that's quite worrisome. There's highway straight into the name of Astro. Okay, let's go. In winter's past, Carey has towed up on the Coquihalla. You're scratching here. But it's a much wider road. Highway 5, there's three lanes. So you got a lot of wiggle room. It's a little truck that could. Today, the real estate is daunting. Highway 3 is on critical overload situation. We need to get Highway 5 open. Threading the needle. Finally, Carey reaches his next assignment. Yeah, put one in that one, I'll get this one. The stress was on me to do those pull-ups as quick and safely as possible. Okay. Wrangling a 90-foot B train. You gotta stay in your lane and make sure the oncoming traffic lane is going to be able to pass you. It's an unforgiving squeeze. You on channel here on uh, the falls? On up to 8% grades. I'm on here. Today was a success indeed. I've stepped up to the plate. Corks out of the bottle. That scope of ability for carry is blossoming definitely. He's uh, on his way to becoming a terrific operator. Oh, the trucks in front of me are moving. see myself in a big wrecker one day. Might be a rotator even. their attack Is that good there against a loaded trailer made of steel this is definitely not something that's very commonplace you don't see them all the time rig points designed for shipyards okay offer options for the heavyweight recovery. There's more spots to hook on to than a normal trailer. Put the chain through the hole and then just back into itself. You can either go through the container eyelets or you can go through the chassis or both. Yeah, yeah that's right. Then let it hang over the side. Perfect. With two heavies on the back end, the rotator rigged to two eyelets will finesse the rig out with its revolving boom. Now we gotta do the same on the bottom. With all three of these trucks pulling, we're pretty evenly matched weight-wise. Holy cow! Okay, I'm gonna drive up now. But lining up for action. Hopefully don't get too much cold. Sub-zero temperatures are anything but ideal. 
The cold weather is always a factor when you're doing a recovery, and it affects everything on the equipment. Can you do the heating? Where's the heating? So, Jamie. We'll heat up the concrete. Fires up a roadside fix. Yeah. So the fork right into the ground? Yeah. We need some traction for our spades. We need to heat the road up. It's cold here, right? Eh? This will help us hold these trucks back because they can actually dig into the pavement somewhat. Okay, let's get pulling. Let's get on your controls. Good to go. The 110,000 pound pull. Okay, let's get going. Kicks off. Pass. Oh, pull it! Jamie's showdown. Wind her down. With a shipping container. It's lifting the container off the chassis. Threatens to come apart. Doing this recovery, the bogies are following the container. Are the pins not in? No, the pin lock isn't even on the chassis. Worst case scenario, the container could fall off the chassis, then we have a big problem. The boss hammers out the problem, securing the locking mechanism. That should be good now. We're gonna do our best to not have any more damage happen to this truck. Okay, let's get back to pulling again. That one's gonna be a hard one. Round two. The LA Rotator's first snowy recovery begins. There she comes. Are you good, Brock? Yeah, we're good. With new hire, Brock on one of the other two wreckers. There's a ton of pressure on me right now, but I just want to make sure I do my job the right way. It's a tall order. Hey, Brock. He's green, hasn't done a lot of it. He's actually coming along really good. Is my corner off the ground? With heavy steel. No, you're still touching. I can't see that corner. On the line. Just keep watching there, yeah. Okay, stop! I'll stop. Hours ago, the loaded semi lost the highway. Why do you guys reset? Now, it needs room to land. I'll go ahead and then he can move. Yeah, then I'll move. One at a time. Okay. Yeah. Take it easy, slow down, and be patient. We're gonna reset the trucks a bit further now, another 10 feet ahead, or one truck length anyway. Steady Eddie wins the race. Just make sure I don't go in traffic. Single lane. Watch yourself. Does anyone know how the Fraser Valley looks today? To the west. Is it still wet? The city of Abbotsford has a long road to recovery. This being a hundred year event, a hundred year flood, this was huge. Earlier this month, I've never seen it like this in my life. Farmland that produces half of BC's dairy and eggs was hit hard. It's not safe. Today, with ground slowly drying, got to go back to work. Have your own. Transports key to the community 
are on the move. Thanks for the good work, folks. So this is still quite saturated land out here. Brian Redekop drives a feed truck, a run vital to local livestock. As you can see on the right, just stuff everywhere. Just been demolished. Try and keep rolling. You see all the hard work restoring normalcy to their lives. It's time to deliver. We're all in, ready to unload. At one of more than 40 chicken farms in the disaster zone. If their feed was wet, they, they probably felt helpless not being able to feed their, their livestock. When flooding hit, rescue efforts saved many animals. Still, more than half a million perished. It's life and death. Animals have passed away. There's people that have lost their livelihood. Now, drivers like Brian help farms move forward. These animals are all counting on us to get their feed that we got on board. But minutes away, another company's feed truck is sidelined. That does not look good. Days ago, There's like two feet there. the driver crashed in high waters. They need the rotator for that guy. Okay. Today, Aggressive Towing's Chris Mervin. They were trying to keep all the animals alive out here and they ended up falling off the road. Has been cleared to do the recovery. The driver escaped. With these waters going back, we can now access into areas where we weren't allowed. Close behind, in Aggressive's 70-ton flagship. We're taking both rotators is Jamie's brother, Jason. Farmers depend on feed trucks. They are definitely needed for the community to keep moving. But rescuing this rig will be anything but simple. Just get over here. That's enough room to put this back on the road. We've got an eight to 10 foot deep ditch and it is spanning the ditch. Then we're probably gonna have to rig a, around the here with a strap and then hopefully pull it through. <laughs> so that's what I'm concerned about. The feed truck flipped more than 90 degrees into the waterlogged trench. It's head down. It's actually rolled enough where it's leaning upside down now. We're gonna need to get something over there, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a few obstacles that we're, we're gonna have to overcome. We really need to do is get a pull on it and see what it's gonna do. He got cold fast. Frosted rig up. To the east, Jamie's crew. To be ready to go. Is at a make or break stage on a heavy metal rack. Brock, when you're working with other trucks, what you gotta do is you gotta watch my wrecker and his. There's a lot of moving pieces to this deal. If you feel you're gonna pull yourself back, stop, let him catch up. All right. He pulls too hard, give it a bit, okay. you know? Three heavies begin the final push to wrestle 110,000 pounds over the crest of the bank. Recovery is unpredictable. The adrenaline rush of doing this job 
is what makes guys keep doing it. Watch yourself. Suddenly. Keep going. A twisted rate point catches Jamie's eye. You get that butterfly in your stomach feeling, hey, that something could go wrong here. L.A. Rotator has a twisted high line. Closer on? No, no. Suddenly shifting. Yeah, I'm gonna get... A line jerking or jumping can sometimes kick in the pants. Cable settled. Yeah, I'm all done. Stop, Rock. If I can keep pulling. The 40 ton rotators revolving boom. California truck doesn't like minus 12, minus 15, but oh, I think I've got it dialed in now. Okay, hold on, Jamie. Good. I gotta stop. Has conquered the front end. Okay, yeah, pop her down, pop the brakes on. The rotator is especially helpful. Just makes it a lot more easier for us to have it here. Okay, now I'll rip her out of there. That's good. Uh, that worked out really well. Yeah, no, that was good. Now we're gonna split the truck and trailer apart, tow them in together, and this job is done. Jamie's new recruit, Brock. It feels good to have, you know, everything out of the ditch. Notches his first heavyweight win. I'm getting ready to head home. That's an accomplishment. Come on! Watching Brock, I was very impressed. He was naturally understanding the physics of what we're doing. The big iron. That was a big that pull. Was, that was pretty that heavy. Was, that was a good one, yeah. Is ready to roll. Okay, let's get out of here then. Okay. Right, good. I'm happy about the way things went. Well, we have a great bunch of guys. Probably some of the best guys we've ever had working for us. Oh, they got it all cleaned up, driver. That was a lot of water, man. To the west, in Abbotsford. Okay, let's grab some chains, chain that axle. Chain that axle. Team Aggressive mobilizes for an extreme battle. Vehicles overturned on the backside. You think we should be putting a half inch there, Drudo? A little more challenging because there's a little more oomph to pull it up. We always use the three eighths, I don't know. Let's see if you want half inch. I would. In the tow industry, it's called a head down wreck. And I'll grab you half inch. I just worry about us and then bam. The semi is below the horizon. Multiple lines from the two rotators need to raise it up to add rigging for the roll. The hope here is, is that we can get this trailer back on its wheels without crushing it. We're gonna hopefully get enough gap on the bottom side in order to get some straps underneath it. Once we can get under, it goes into the end of the yellow, then we pass the yellow underneath and up. 
a feed truck. Are you ready? Yeah, go. Crucial to the farming community. It is at stake. More on yours. They're quite specialized vehicles. Us of damaging it more, not an option. Valley. Oh, holy. Aggressive's first play on a tricky recovery is snarled. Uh, Murph. I put one of my auxiliary winches to do the roll. I never liked those cables. No. Ever. Subsequently applied way too much force to my little cable. And sent her to the moon. Is this great, Stephanie? We were doing really good there, Merv. Jason and Merv quickly regroup. My main winch has a bigger cable, and we'll use that in order to get our roll started to get our straps wrapped around it. But with 80,000 pounds, You can see underneath, put a yellow around it. Now suspended. Oh yeah, beauty. By Aggressive's two rotators. Well, I'll throw a string under, you hook the string. There's a new risk to contend with. The feed truck's fragile aluminum tank. Just go into here. The strap's gotta go up and over though, right? Otherwise, we'll crush all that. There's not a lot of strength in these trailers. These things are designed to haul maximum amount of payload and be very lightweight while they're doing it. See it, Jordo? Okay. He's got it. Hold on, tie that to that strap, Rob. You apply too much force to one point and you can ripple it, you can break it. Bring the strap up, see how far we need. Rigging for the roll. Shoot's gonna give us issues. Merv has another concern. Is it just hanging? Yeah. yeah. These green trucks have a big 40 foot long auger pipe on them. The pivoting chute. That could come out, hit our rigging, or break off and cost the customer more money. It's on the ground right now. Is a wild card. My strap is on the outside, we put tension on it, it would bring it up into its cradle again. I just worry about crushing it, that's all. Yeah. One hundred thirty kilometers northeast. The shutdown Coquihalla is blanketed in white. Not very good situation. We're expecting two feet or more of snow. Highways maintenance supervisor Curtis Brown. It's going to make it very difficult to keep construction going. And his army of plows. Hey guys, I've got two trucks that are heading this way now. Clear roads for the rebuild. Okay, thanks. With cold temperatures, it's going to be quite the task for my crew out there to maintain it just to keep construction flowing. Earlier this month, severe flooding. Yeah, I heard it washed out there. Left more than 20 sites on the coke in need of repair. There's hundreds and hundreds of people out here working every single day and night. 
We're doing our best to get our equipment up, operators in it. When you get down to autumn right here where the excavator is, I'm gonna get you to dump off like a ton of sand. The excavator starts crawling down and starts sliding. For the repairs that we need to do to get the Kogalo open for the winter, that's our main goal here. It's one of the most important corridors. And when you've got to manage that, that's a tall order to fill. Good stuff, thank you very much. You're gonna get jammed up. The aggressive crew. What's it stuck on? On the rubber. Has come up with a strategy. Five. To rein in a feed truck chute. Can we strap it there? That's what I'm gonna wrap a chain around it. Because I'd rather have some down force on this outrigger. If we start flipping this vehicle over, and this thing's not tied down, that could come out and hurt one of our staff. On the 80,000 pound transport. I think we got her. Pull it as he cables out. The complex rigging is set. He's got it under there now. We're gonna rely heavily on the strap that we just put around the back to finish the rollover and bring it up. Hours into the job, it's gonna jump in a minute, right? It's time. Okay, you ready a little more on that flow? Yeah. To attempt the roll. A little more on yours. Keep going. Okay, hold it. Multiple lines to the load with multiple points of contact. You're applying a ton of force in order to make this thing try to come over. The moment of truth in aggressive's bid to save a fragile feed truck. Watch that line. Okay, hold it. If you use too much force on aluminum sidewalls like these trailers have, fuel just put the chain right through it. Precise handling. High lines rigged to straps is paying off so far. Let's put an eight foot fanless loop this way into that rim and you just pick up and let it come into you. That's what I'd say. Nice and tight, too, eh? The next obstacle is flood soaked ground. So just leave it loose, hook onto that thing. We're dealing with muddy conditions, super muddy conditions. Just pick it up so you can come into it, right? Yeah. We just gotta keep on moving it closer to the roadway back onto solid ground. If we pull on the nose one that you have, Might pull it ahead. it'll try chasing you. pounds. Okay. Pull your butt up a little. Finally touches blacktop. Yep. You're on solid. For us to be able to go in, get it back on its wheels with little to no more damage, that's a good accomplishment. What do you want me to do? Pull it ahead now? Yeah. We're just gonna spin Jason around. We'll pull it forward. That's it. Well, all in all, I'd say eight and a half out of ten. We had one casualty. Thanks, Rob. 
the hometown victory will help the farming industry rebuild. You guys have been here for 30 years, and we're always very happy to satisfy the community. This is our backyard. Being able to come out here and help these guys get things right again is a good feeling. Next time on Highway Through Hell. Welcome to the Highway 7 parking lot. The reliable mission team. Hold on. Battles big rigs on the rocks. Watch out. Trouble on a farm. Holy. Has MSA on tricky ground. No, 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 no. And an urgent mission. The hospital needs that trailer. Sends Jamie's crew up the closed coat. Holy cow. mission team Hold on. battles big rigs on the rocks watch out trouble on a farm Holy. has msa on tricky ground oh, no, no, no. and an urgent mission the hospital needs that trailer sends jamie's crew up the closed coat holy cow November. Highway 7 is open for truck. On the only route to the coast. It is a single lane most of the way. And there's lots of windy parts of it. The road is overwhelmed. Wow, I've never seen traffic so bad on Highway 7. Because the other option so how's Highway 1 going towards the coast? The Trans-Canada is still shut down. Well, ain't out of the woods yet, that's for sure. Earlier this month, a devastating weather event. The road's gone. Destroyed transport corridors. Woo. Pretty crazy. Causing a loss in movement of roughly two and a half billion dollars in goods. Wow. Now on Highway 7. The pressure from the ministry to keep this road open is immense. This is an essential route. They get ready to smell burnt clutch the whole way up the hill, I guess. Big rigs are struggling. We've never faced this type of challenge before. To run the gauntlet. The steepest section is a cliffside stretch snaking up a mountain. On that short, tight corner, this is what's going to happen. Just block both lanes there. Pulling up near Mount Woodside. Operator James Luke has a different name in mind. We call it the Ripper because you get some guy that'll cut you off. Next thing you know, you're into the mountainside. The cop is going to block traffic at the top. This semi is hauling 50,000 pounds of zinc. Until we get this job done, 
No one's really going anywhere. What's the hold up here on 7 now? Loaded Super B right in the ditch on that 30k corner. On Highway 7. We gotta go like now. Got a super B stuck in the ditch. You're gonna go to the back? Back trailer. Andy's gonna go in the mid trailer. He'll pick, and we both we both pull at the same time. Two reliable mission heavies. Coordinated. Yep, 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 yep. By Ty Kennedy. Okay, two snatch blocks, James. Double those up right away. Okay have an urgent assignment. This is the only highway that is actually leading Vancouver to the other side of Canada. Let's get him all rigged up, help him rig up. He started climbing the hill, he's in the middle. Don't let anybody pass you. On Ripper Hill. We are on the steepest part of this hill, in one of the sharpest corners. This pole's gonna be nasty, it's heavy. Plus the resistance of the ditch and the mountainside. It's gonna be one hell of a pole. They face a total weight. This is a fully loaded B-train with zinc plates. It's about as heavy as it gets. Of 90,000 pounds. This is just going to be havoc for us. It's not going to be a fun time. The 35-ton will tackle the back of the rig. As the 50-ton finesses the middle to the road. and operator Andy Cullum. James and I are going to have to work in unison to try to slide this over. Are we ready? Yeah, we're going to pick it up and slide it over. Yeah, we're ready, yeah. Start. OK, start pulling, James. The tug of war. It's very ominous. Standing here, we're in on a rock face. We've got lines creaking. This is just a very tense situation. Ty, want me to lift that far corner? Yeah, keep pulling. Help it out. On a B train, it's all about the weight. We need to be able to pick and pull at the same time. There you go, yeah. But moments into the effort. Keep it going, keep it going. minutes west. How's the weather looking? In the Fraser Valley. Very dry. Dispatched. I'm driving 50 ton. In MSA Towing's heaviest record. There might be a challenge and who knows. Kerpal Van Wait. Rides with his oldest son. Well, let's get there. Gersharn. Get some lines on it. Yeah. Or G. This has to be done tonight. We want them up and out of there. That's it. Last winter. Yeah, it's coming. The family business specializing oh. in heavy towing and recovery. Sim, unload the accelerator. You're good, you're good. Took on major bent metal challenges. It doesn't matter the call comes in in early in the morning, late night. Good job, guys. Yahoo! I always say yes, I will be there. After a milestone event this past spring. Biggest news in my life uh, would be I just got married. It was nice to have 
a relaxing week. And we don't really get that in the, in the towing industry. Kapal is geared up for another big season. But arriving... Did he say where it is? At a local farm. Oh, no. So we're just going to walk there on foot to have a look first? Their target is nowhere in sight. We are not able to find the loader. Where is it? See how far it is? Deep in the field. Holy McCrowy. A 30,000 pound machine. Oh, boy, boy, boy. The distance of our wrecker to the loader, about 150 to 200 feet away. Kind of a curveball for sure. <laughs> It's not easy. Welcome to the Highway 7 parking lot. Keep pulling. 50 kilometers east. No truck trying to lift the super demon. Help it out. A cliffside battle on Ripper Hill. Nice. Keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. Strains a rig point. This is a very stressful job. I don't want anything broken. I gotta be pretty cautious with it. Help him, James! Pull. The reliable mission team. The pressure we have right now is huge to get the highway open. Presses on. another worry. Every time I roll it, these tires just dig in. Yeah, it's just digging if in. If I can get a little lift on it while I'm pulling it like that, we'll fix this issue. A quick re-rig. A B-train adds a little bit of a challenge with the extra pivot point in the middle. Gives Andy two high lines on the point of concern. We've got a 50 ton and a 35 ton. It should be able to handle the weight, but you never know. There you go. Okay, pull a little bit, James. Just a little bit. The 90,000 pound transport. Okay, good. Loaded with zinc. All train tires are out of the ditch. Is clear of the cliff. Nice. Okay, d rig I'm pretty impressed with how Team Reliable is doing. Are the brakes on? Now the brakes are on. He's on the road. That's good. Unhook it. Unhook everything. But the job isn't over yet. Go to the top and tell that cop we'll be open in five minutes. They'll give this semi. It's really hard for trucks to launch off on this hill. A hand. There you go. Of the steep grade. We're going to be opening it up in five minutes. The 35 ton. Yeah. Heads up the hill. Pump seeing both Western stars side by side like this working. Love it. The more powerful heavy. Let's go. Wrestles the rig. Have a good night. Clearing the road. People are moving again and gonna end up getting wherever they need to be. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But when the rescued semi rolls out. Semi trying to get hauling. Guys come right around the corner. 
They can't see us from either direction. There you go. If we're not paying attention, this is one of the most dangerous jobs around. Traffic is finally moving. In the 35 ton, James needs to refuel. It feels great. We got the highway open. People are moving again. But minutes later. Oh, there's another one. How about that, eh? Ripper Hill. This is another truck in the ditch right where the other one was. Strikes again. Are you serious? We have a large tractor trailer carrying an excavator. Put himself into the ditch. Oh my god. Ty is back on duty. As soon as you get one truck out of the way, another one goes right back in the ditch. That guy's right on the edge of disaster. That was a lot of fun. What the heck? To the west, on a farm. Holy macaroni. A toppled machine. It's not easy. Far afield is anything but simple for MSA. I see the loader and I thought, oh, it's going to take a uh, time to, to flip it over. The 30,000 pound loader is more than 150 feet from the wrecker with impassable ground in between. We'll back the truck up okay. and run the cable. A wrecker doesn't have access to get right close. We're gonna run the lines from, from back there to the loader to get the right angle. We had to really make sure that we rigged to the right spots. Wood chips used to protect crops. Do you have extra gloves? I don't know. That's fine. These are my gloves. See? Work for and against them. It's very hard to walk on the sawdust and pulling the cables. <laughs> but we are going to do it. Kerpal okay. recruits another machine there we go. to help. They have a small farm tractor there. That's it! So we are using that tractor. This one will be easier to pull the cable. The plan? is to use two lines from the 50 ton to right the loader. You can't just hook on to any given spot. Be careful, it'll be slippery. Yeah, it is. You have to make sure that where your rig to is strong. Okay. Yeah, that's good. D line for driver sideline, P line for passenger sideline. Yeah. But as Kerpal winds up, is the line coming in now? No. What the heck? One cable oh. falls short. Came out. Everything was going smooth, and of course, something like that happens. Holy. Although the cable came off the drum, the second line was for extra measure, extra safety. Let me try to pull the one first and see how it goes. From the heavy wrecker. Keep pulling. With a single long line. It's coming, that's it. The loader starts to budge. I think it's impossible. Should I quickly run and take that chain off? Yeah, go ahead. We will do it. The tough part on this one would be... Just give me a sec. Okay. The distance of the pole. Yes, sir. Here she comes. The 
position. Yeah, keep going. Of the loader's bucket. High in the air. So that's good. That's it. Oh, it, it's going to flip again. Could throw the unit off balance and cause it to tip over again. My biggest concern to get this job done is uh, awkward position. Hold on to the cables, jump in and uh, try to load the bucket. G hops in to try to make the machine. Okay, we fire it up. <clears throat> less top heavy. As kind of a balancing act. Tad bit sketchy, just given the angle. As the 3,000 pound bucket lowers, the wheels touch down. Take the hook out and put the chain into the D-ring. Next step is trying to climb it out of that. I can try to dr drive this out. Get it done once and done right. Give me more line. Sure. A quick re rig. Okay, that's good. Adds insurance. We are holding that with the cable so not to flip over. So, you want me to try the cable now? Yeah, put some tension on it. 45 minutes into the recovery. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay. Gurpal's youngest son. Gurkirat. Yeah. Or Gurk. They'd already got the loader up, right? But it's still pretty badly stuck. Joins the fight against the challenging terrain. Under the sawdust is a big soft spot, and that's what caused it to flip over in the first place. With the safety line engaged. Yo, can you lift yourself up? Yeah, I'll try that. Let me try to lift my front end. Put it up and tilt it up. Put your bucket forward. The brothers, get ready. Put it on down to the ground. Dug it into the ground. To try to beat the soft ground. Try to back it up and at the same time open the bucket too. I'm trying to rock it back and forth. I should come and climb out of the rut it's in. Clear skies tonight. In the Fraser Valley. I don't think it's gonna work. MSA Towings. Holy. Farm Showdown is in a rut. No, it's not going. The wheels are spinning out. There's no way for me to drive it out. Under the sawdust, loader's weight went down to the soft spot. Trying to climb it out of that, kind of a challenge. Okay, let me see. Dad's gonna try it. See if he can drive it out. Now, G. Okay, drive that tractor right here. Yeah. Has a new role to play. I'm going to lift it up. Okay. Push the the sawdust under the tire. Sounds good. With his younger brother. Want to lift these tires up and see what happens. So be careful when you're driving this thing. It's uneven ground here. Firing up a farm tractor. You want to plow it in there? Yeah. Plow close to the tire, then you can push it in after. To move wood chips. Go down. That way, that way, that way. Toward the sunken tire. Don, Don. The sawdust will give us more traction. That's it. Stop. And also leveling the loader up. Gert. Okay, go back. Straight the wheels. Up. Open it. Is no stranger to farm equipment. I learned how to drive a tractor when I was probably eight or nine years old. But this. Far from routine. <laughs> that kind of, you know, gave me a run for my money. <laughs> it's time for Kerpal to test the on the fly landscaping. My dad getting me and Girk to put sawdust underneath the wheels. 
That's definitely a trick from his old man book. You are playing or you are doing something? So I'm feeling this? Yep. Pick something up. Oh my god. To be able to joke around with my dad it means a lot to me as a son. Come on, man. I know he's messing with me. Tell me some stuff. I know he knows that I work hard. Back and forth, back and forth, turning different ways. There we go. My plan is working 100%. That's how she's done, boys. That wasn't so hard, eh? <laughs> My dad, he's definitely old school, but it works. That's it. Bingo. First thing tomorrow. That went good. The machine can get back to it. Okay, coming in. It went well, I would say. The loader wasn't damaged. Are they heavy? Pretty light. You want to try? I tried that so many times. And MSA's 50-ton heavy, one winch line down. Once we get back to the shop, the cable will go right back on the drum. Will be made whole again. Okay. I got sawdust everywhere, itchy all over. You know what? It was worth it. That's it. That's it. Time to hit the showers. Wait for the next call. Let the boys roll. Right on. To the east, on Ripper Hill. The road there was like a big excavator, right? Like there. A second rig on the rocks. It's frustrating for everybody. As essential travel snarled. This is the only route from the Alberta border to Vancouver. Under pressure. We'll face downwards. We'll pick it up this way. Sit here? Yeah. It's coming in here? Yeah. To clear the site. It's basically a spot on Mount Woodside that just sucks everybody in. Have to be right across here. Ty and Mission's 50-ton heavy. Let's try and get as 90 as we can do it. Face a heftier pull. We're going to want to double it. Then the first transport they rescued. Put the left line with this around this frame rail. It's kind of slide it over. It's a zero radius excavator. So they're extremely heavy on their own turret, plus a trailer. Up against a combined weight of 95,000 pounds. What's your thought? I wanted to get it higher. Yeah, that's what I mean. If we boom in and back up. This time, there's only one heavy immediately available. James has gone to town to get fuel. Uh, it's just bad timing. Ideally, this is a two record job but I gotta take care of things alone. We got resistance against us with the downhill slope. We got everything working against us. Lifting off the cliffside. Let's watch the boom of the excavator, eh? Real estate. I'm watching, man. Is tight. We wanna make sure that we're being careful. That's coming. is on the road now. Tires are on the pave. Perfect. But solving the problem. Gonna double them, try to do the... We'll take a little more. There you go. There we go. It's a game of just trying to play catch up all the time. Hold all your brakes on. Uh, if we can get it out without doing any more damage, we're laughing. Anybody up there where that low bed is? We're just lifting towards you. What's the status? Pulling it back more. Yeah, but it's coming over, see? There it goes. There it goes. There. I look like he might be on the road. Okay, well, he should be okay. I mean, he's got a foot. Hopefully, we've got him over enough. Should have enough space now to make it out. 
solidly on the blacktop. Four all back. This driver will try to carry on without help. The traffic's backed up for kilometers. We gotta get this road open. Watch out, he might roll back a bit. If he can make it up by himself, it's gonna make our cleanup a lot faster. He's trying to get out. Not too much, not too much, it's easy. On the only route so what's the latest word? to the coast. How long is this going to be? Don't roll back. Still not out of trouble. Watch out, he might roll back a bit. A heavyweight attempt. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Not moving. Fails to get traction. Ah, uh, that sucks. No, oh, it's all on. It's kind of like bashing your head against the wall. Frank, we're back and down now. On the grade that he's on, we have to pull him up. From the 50-ton heavy. Here. How many trucks went in that ditch today? Ty. Two now. Gearing! And Andy hustle to rig. He's gonna winch him? No, just go. He's got enough power, he just doesn't have the lift off. You're just hooking your track, you're up to the drag, so. Hey, get ready. You want to go bolo? Yeah, go bolo, yeah. You're going to help him. Using the lowest possible gear. Okay, let's go. There you go. Out of way. Ty tags along to coach the driver. Just stay there. Just bolo the whole way. Just pull that out of the way. I'm hoping that we just get a break. I mean, it's just been nonstop. Okay, good job on the right there, man. Okay, I'm gonna jump off, take care, eh? Be safe. It's moving slowly. Highway 7 is flowing. Okay, we're good. The reliable mission team. Watch out, send it in! Has beat Ripper Hill. Turn to move now. I know everyone's done their best. Oh, at least we're rolling. The mission is absolutely accomplished. Well, you guys be safe out there. Eh? Thanks for keeping the road clear. south i've been coming down here for years and i've never taken this i always just go the same way jamie and greg mulligan having one highway open i can get through to do my work team drive in the united states after taking highway seven well i don't know where i'm going half the time you know they're heading to get two units so they're bringing a second jamie davis truck we call that piggyback in. Just saves diesel. How many miles do you think you put on this truck? 90,000. You put 90,000 kilometers on it? Wow. There's no point in two trucks driving down the road together. Well, you know, it's almost 960 highway hours. 1,000 hours you don't have on your life anymore. That's 1,000 hours just sitting here thinking. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, you what do. What am I doing with life? Yeah. <laughs> Nice day. Good trucking. In Jamie's hometown, Hope. Driver Mitch Mahood is dispatched on a crucial run. The trailer that I have to pick up today is full of a bunch of medical supplies for the hospital. With a pilot truck. So we have to go up to Sawakwa and get this drop deck trailer with the 40,000 pound sea can. And his girlfriend on board. Hey Rob, 
The back side of this hill is always icy. Yep, 10-4, thank you. The team heads to a highway that's been shut down for days. There's a real mess down here. Widespread devastation to the Coquihalla. Washouts. Huge, huge damage. On the east side of town, they must take a detour through a major washout to head up the coke. Wow. Oh, look on the other side here. That used to be a road. Whoa. Look at it. I'm in the Kenworth today which is our yard truck. Jamie's team is en route to access the coke. From my understanding, the trailer we have to pick up today, it's full of stuff for the hospitals. And the area that we're gonna have to go through today, uh, at the bottom of the fellow here, is where all that carnage happened. Earlier this fall, on the east end of Hope, the road is completely washed out there. Flood waters. Coquihalla River is running like a madman. Destroyed a neighborhood. That was unreal. A lot of water coming through there. Next to the Coke. Today. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Big machines are hard at work. Look at it. Oh, wow. Making epic repairs. For Mitch. This is only road. This is river before. The situation. It's close to home. I used to live up there. So this is where the houses used to be right here. And then it's just empty space. There's nothing there. But with some ground restored. Yeah, you can see here that all got washed away. There's a new path to vital cargo up the coast. The supply chain is affected so largely in this event. See the trailer. It's really an urgent situation to get to that trailer and hook up to it. Weeks ago, There's still a hundred vehicles down here. When disaster struck the coke, you need to move your trailer to the right. Disconnect Bobtail Bath now. Truckers abandoned cargo to save themselves. The road closures put huge stress on the trucking community. You'll get killed. The drivers went through some tough times. Yeah, I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Today. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Tires look good. This left behind load. It's a little slippery. So, yeah, there's going to be some ice to contend with. Could mean life or death. This trailer here is actually full of medical supplies. We've got to try and get this down so they can get it delivered. It's not buried. You should be able to get underneath it. Yeah, yeah, and I got bare pavement there. She's looking pretty good. Don't see any structural damage or anything. No. So we'll back up, get hooked up. Because the hospital needs that trailer, they've given us authorization to go up there. But in the closure zone. Got it? You're locked. There it is. There we go. It'll be no simple run. Once we do get it freed up and moving, we still have to try and find a way to get turned around to get back down. Mitch. Oh, man, is this thing heavy. As 
tens of thousands of pounds in tow. With that much weight, I really got to be on the ball for it. We're going to get stuck. No, we're not going to get stuck. I just got to get back. I do have a bit of a reputation of being able to do that. After nailing a three-pointer. It's amazing to see the service guys working around the clock. Jamie's team heads back to town. I'm actually a little bit nervous about that now. Come on, buddy. The closer we get to hope, the more service vehicles I have to watch out for. So Mitch puts safety first. Stop. Go behind me. I got lots of people behind me. Ten four. That's why we have a pilot truck that came up with us today, LR-19. But hitting a steep stretch. Uh-oh. Just lost it. Died. I think I'm gonna have dolphins, man. My truck's starting to smoke. Guys, take it real slow through there. A critical freight run. Uh -oh. Suddenly stalls. Dig. For Jamie's team. This truck shut off on me. This is definitely not a good situation to be in. I think I have dolphins, man. My truck's starting to smoke. Uh oh. But working the clutch of the 1985 tractor. It smells kind of funky. Mitch keeps things moving. You can do it, old truck. It's got a lot of miles on it. It's older, and there's always the risk of it breaking down. But we got to work with what we have. On the closed Coca-Cola, the crew lays eyes. Holy! Look at that! Oh, holy cow! On a rock cut. And here too. Being stripped to fill washouts. Oh my. Yeah. How about a little bit of rock? I had no Holy idea. Smokes, no man. idea. This is insane. We're making it. We're making it. Oh, thank God. Whatever you go through, you just got to pick yourself back up. Nearing town. Oh, Rob, I died again. Rob, we died again. Oh, shoot. Oh, boy. Once again, Mitch. There we go. He got her going. Rolling start. <laughs> comes through. It's always a good day when things go well. Oh, oh it's heavy. Keep going, man. Into the flying jet. The team arrives at a local truck stop. We finally got the trailer back to Hope. A little bit nerve-wracking on the way down with a few hiccups, but we made it. Thanks for your help, guys. That was awesome. Bravo, time, it was my Mitch. pleasure. That's what we're here for. All that's left is to deliver good news. Successful mission with the trailer. I got it down to the Flying J for you. Okay, man, thank you very much. I appreciate that. The hospital can come out and pick up the supplies, so it'll go to the people that need it. Uh, you have yourself a good day. Drive safe. I'll be that big driver. Ten hours south. How's the traffic? No problem. Here you come out here. Two Jamie Davis trucks. Why don't you go across the scale and get a ticket, a weight ticket? Are loaded up. You'll be 33,890. I bet you. 33,890. That's a bet. Jamie and Greg. I'm betting 20 bucks that it's over 34. Okay. I'll wait right here. Come back with a weight ticket. All right. Make a friendly wager. 
Jamie and myself. It's a mutual respect, you know, that I think we, uh, we have for one another. Before heading north... ...with their highway halls. Greg's been really working hard. I owe Jamie 20 bucks. <laughs> He's been all over America and Canada. How much is it? So I'm winning this one? Jamie Davis strikes again. You're underweight. <laughs> I knew it. Now you can keep it and buy lunch. We're doing a lot of long haul work. You know, it's a very robust part of our business. All okay. right. All right. I guess we can get trucking, eh? Beautiful day for a drive. Hammer down. So I'm kind of getting the best of everything. I enjoy getting out on the open road and just being my own boss and do your 10 hours and where's the next salad bar? Love my life is a driver. Tanker in tight. Hopefully, he doesn't get too close to that pole. Pushes Jamie to the limit. Oh. A hang up on a vital route. You have no trailer brakes. It's a sketchy ride for MSA. And a chilling close call. When I heard that water underneath, it was pretty scary. Tests Reliable's newest team. Watch out. time on highway through hell the wind is just nuts extreme cold beautiful out here we got tropical weather whoa! tests teams in the valley whoa, whoa! Oh, that's a, a push a little bit and pull mission for reliable's green machine the gloves are frozen and jamie and craig okay go 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 feel the bite what hey Here. Late fall, the Fraser Valley is in a deep chill like never before. Frosted right up. Nobody's seen that the minus temperature is beating the past records. Hopefully, no in the city of Abbotsford. That's a bad day when that happens. So where exactly is this? Heading to the crash. It's right uh, before Mount Lima Road. MSA towings, Kerpal Banwait. Oh, just down the road here? Yeah, I just did on the road. Rolls with his oldest son, Gersharn, or G. We're going through a bit of a cold snap. Last night, we had a dump of snow. It's right over on his side, eh? Yeah. Hopefully the driver's okay. Yeah, the driver's okay. The way this truck and trailer went over, it's definitely a, a brutal job. One of the dead sideways. What happened? Last night, the transport rolled off the road. Let's see if we can open the back end off. The trailer. Broccoli, anyone? Is far from empty. 
truck has about 40,000 pounds of, of produce. In the extreme weather, the perishable freight won't last. It's going to be frozen because the temperature is minus 17. It's cold, man. It's freezing. It's up to MSA. They're going to have to unload to save the $100,000 load. Gotta go, go, go and get the job done as quick as possible. Temperature is dropping. Very cold. Fraser Valley. Yep. MSA is under pressure. You guys ready? Let's make a line. To save a load of produce. But well, be careful. It's very slippery. In record-breaking coal. Everything just starts to slowly freeze. <laughs> I don't think I've ever experienced this low of temperatures in Abbotsford before. Box by box, $100,000 in freight. The load is of fresh vegetables. Most of the vegetables, they are still okay. He's moved. That's it. We are going to go super fast with uh, the crew. There's the second pickup. Into any vehicles available. It's very unusual offload. As a transfer trailer is arranged by the customer nearby. The yard is like five minutes from here. The vegetables, if they get freeze, they are done, so we have to hurry up. Bring the pickup back. It's gonna take a while to clean up. Well, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Two hundred fifty kilometers northeast. Dispatched from the town of Merritt. Reliable Towing's military rotator. I'll be up there shortly. And Dylan Greenwood have been called to a secondary route. They've asked us to keep this highway open to clear the trucks off as fast as we can. Right now, the narrow road is the only north-south option. They're used to the Coquihalla, which is a, a four-lane superhighway. It's gonna give them a punch. And they are now pushed down onto Highway 5A. It's gonna give them a bump up the hill. Dylan lines up for a heavyweight nudge. isn't much that they six by six can't do. All right, we're in business. It's pretty much unstoppable. But moments later, he's right on the edge of the ditch. On to the next problem. Buried in there. Dylan is faced. Better. With a driver. Yeah, I'd say so. In a worse situation. The passenger uh, steer caught the edge and started sliding down. He's really close to the edge, going in deeper. The semi's weight. What are you loaded with? Well, I have no idea. It was locked when I got it. It was locked when you got it. Is unknown. We're going to treat it like a fully loaded tractor trailer. What I'm thinking is. 
I gotta pull you back. Anyone know what's going on up there? That wicked old reliable truck is just getting into position. Pretty close to the ditch. Watch your drives, I don't want to see you spin. Just gonna back up to that, hook that up. to the trailer's bumper. It's designed to prevent a car from crashing underneath it. Dylan gets to it. Slight a little bit. Six by six in low range, and brought it right out of the ditch. As good as it can get. We want to get these things cleared out as fast as possible. Thank you. Take care. We'll see you around. Southwest. Move faster than this, boys. MSA hustles a 40,000 pound offload. Like minus 20. Of produce threatened by extreme cold. It's tough to be in that weather. You just gotta keep your body temperature up, stay warm. With the effort progressing. Hold on, boys. An unexpected visitor shows up. Somebody was coming with the coffee. <laughs> Aggressive towings, Chris Mervin. We were out playing. Oh. Yeah. So no work today? No work today, no. Mervin was on the way home. Saw us working there and then he stopped. Are you gonna get it out tonight? Yeah. I think we, we should. Well, he's good. Him and his boys work hard. So if you need anything. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you might. He said, let me know if you need an extra hand. And he said, I'll, I'll be here. She got cold fast. Now into the evening. That's it. transfer trailer. Light at the end of the tunnel, eh? It's almost like doing a dance, trying to stay up. It's super, super slippery. He's ready to roll. Let's get this thing out of here, man. Let's get this thing operated. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, just to stop the traffic, he's coming onto the road. With the last of the $100,000 load. Let's get to get ugly tonight. I am super happy that this offload is finished. Couple uh, wreckers going into uh, recovery there. Now we can do the job we are here to do. Now we can flip the trailer over. The big wrecker going up here onto the truck. That's good. And the small wall going back on the on the trailer axle. With lines from the 50 ton to the tractor and a medium duty wrecker on the trailer, they'll try to roll the transport. We need two trucks. One can lift the front end up, and the one truck can lift the back end up. 
That's good, eh? Yeah. That's good! Let's just try this one time. Now on scene, Kerpal's middle son, Gersimrin. Okay, yo, let's tighten the lines up, okay? Or Sim. There is quite a bit of pressure on us. This is a really big recovery. We're good to go. Breaking cold snap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're sliding back. It's a huge headache. Should I keep going? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Line. For MSA towing. Our truck keeps sliding back because the road is so slick. They just hold it. It's definitely frustrating. <laughs> oh boy. You have to make a plan how we are going to do it. I don't know. Oh, you feel that wind in your bones. It's gonna be one big black icy tonight. 20 kilometers east. Be careful around there. In a 20 ton firing towing record. Coming out on the highway is like going to war. Might as well just put skates on. Bitter conditions have Al's oldest son, Kerry, out for battle. You gotta be smarter, think, work fast because it's cold. You want me behind you at first there, Kerry, or uh, in front of you? No, nope, just stay right where you are, Luke. Joining Kerry tonight, Al's youngest son, Lucas. When you're on the highway, it's stressful for someone that's never really experienced a winter storms like that. Where is the um, first car? It'll be coming up. The Trans-Canada Highway is littered with carnage. Yeah, grab one. Got a lot of cars in the ditch. We're gonna pull them out as quick as we can. Watch your back. Team Green's recovery blitz. Grab the cable. Needs to be wrapped before morning rush hour. Winch up. In the fast lane, maybe. You gotta keep your composure. Or you're just not gonna do well. Put the deck down, Luke. Yeah. You try not to let the stress get to you. Okay, you're on. With the first target. Hop in. I'm hopping in, bud. Load it up. The crew has to cross the highway. Working in the fast lane. It's a dangerous location. Once traffic has a break. Don't turn your back on traffic. Keep him for a second up there. All right, Luke, you go. Go, 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 Lucas, get over, man. I'm coming, Kerry. And I'm very aware. You gotta have eyes on the back of your head. Oh, babe. My dad taught me at a young age how to be safe. Here. 
Lucas will double down with the flat deck. There's a huge adrenaline rush. Look at you go. Now fully loaded. Okay, when did you get off the highway? And just give her a double check. Lucas. The cold was brutal. That feels good going home tonight. Heads back to base. All right, where's the next one? But Carey needs to soldier on. Right here. Eats you. Goes straight through you. Just wait there. Yeah. Woo. Oh. It's something else out here. The wind is just nuts. Are they going to pull that truck and trailer out of the ditch? To the west. Couple of wreckers there. The MSA crew. How do you want yeah. to do it? We can throw the belt under the trailer. That's the only way we can pull it. Okay. As a game plan to counter slick conditions. We have to work what we have there. Do how you think you can do it. We will move the truck forward too. But tight real estate. We don't have enough room in the front though. That's the problem. Means no easy way to gain ground. Uh, grab the shovel. We are going to move that snow from the front so I can go three, four feet more forward. How much do you want to clear? The max we can. Ah, it's hard though. Ah. It's almost four or five feet snow and ice oh boy the weather is right now with the, with the wind is minus 17 19. the hands are freezing because it's too cold out here how long is this going to be Good. the heavy is repositioned okay Let's just unhook his truck and bring it here. Now we have enough room up front so we can get the job done. The medium duty lines up. Once the truck comes over, the trailer is going to be a piece of cake. For another go. Okay, going boom up. With the 50-ton re-rigged to a new strap and lines from the 12-ton to the tractor, they'll try to coax the 40,000-pound rig. Load the top line. Oh, just load your lines up till you roll back and then lift it up. Kerpal's youngest son, Gurkirit, or Gurk, I've been operating the Hino for about two and a half years. So I have pretty good experience. Is on the medium duty track. Top, top head, the top one. Sam. That's in the Hino. Works to coordinate. Hold on, go the steer. Steer axle. I'm very determined to get this truck out of the ditch. Okay, steer it. Okay, the top one. Top one. We're gonna keep going and get this thing done. Okay, he know. Okay, now the the front line was rolling. The tractor is cooperating. 
Okay, th this is good. Now it's just that. But the back end is a different story. The bay the trailer is sitting now. Not good at all. You don't want that. In Abbotsford. We are going to move this one over. It's a bone chilling marathon. Loosen this one up, Gert. For the MSA team. Okay, hey, Gert, tighten this up. It's record breaking freezing temperatures that we're having here in the valley. Yesterday, a semi hauling produce tipped off the road. Now, use that line. It's just sitting free. Paul, get the line out. With Kripal overseeing the recovery. This kind of stuff, you have to manage it. You can't do anything else. And the 40,000 pound Rex trailer still in the air. You have to get that trailer to land properly on the ground. Otherwise, things can go wrong. MSA mechanic Paul Singh takes the 50 tons controls for the next stage. Go ahead. Paul, go ahead. I am. this recovery, I'm here to help them out, operate, rig, dig, whatever. But then. Not going. Oh, wrong line, wrong line. Paul, stop. To the east. It's blowing like hell down here. On the Trans Canada Highway. Just wait there. Carey and his team. Yeah. Woo. Are trying to clear. Oh. Multiple vehicles fast. They've got to get pulled out of there before the morning rush hour traffic. The seeing is challenging because the ice is hitting your eyes. Keep on going here. Perfect. Okay, we're good. Put it in neutral. Okay. Adapt and overcome every challenge that's necessary. When you get it closer, just steer until it pops out. Okay. Two hours. to the sub-zero assignment. Perfect, next. The search is on for the final four-wheeler. There is a travel advisory on the highway tonight. Assess the situation as we go. It's beautiful out here. We got tropical weather. I don't think people understand the demand on the human being during the in intensity of keeping that going. It adds to the stress <laughs> that any wrecker operator is going to endure. Keep going. A bit more. Keep going. Can't be out there doing traffic closures in the daytime. Keep it going all the way. It's very important to get the highway clear. So it's going to turn into a giant chaos mess. All right. Team Green. We got everything accomplished that we needed to. Nine-five's headed back westbound. Beats the elements. We were able to get them out as quick as they went in. Before the morning rush. Ready to go home and warm up. Hey, so good job out there tonight. We all appreciate it. Thanks for that, driver. Quite the there. 
15 minutes west. A wrong line, Titan. Oh my god, come on. Is a close call for MSA's suspended wreck. I'm the team leader. I'm telling them what to do. Okay, Carl. Yeah? First, the front line. Cal shifts his technique. Every day I'm learning something new, which is a good thing for me. She's going over. To reel in the low line instead. I trust my team. They are good, good workers. We're gonna move the truck. But hours into the grueling recovery. It's negative 15 outside. It's just brutal. It's cutting right through you. Okay, good right here. Okay. Go boom up. Patience. Why not just hook both and pull the whole thing over? He's running thin. Because we don't have enough room. All it's doing is just trying to beat you down and, and keep you there, right? I'm going to move the truck forward, backward, forward, backward. That's our job, fighting the cold. We are doing the rack. That's it. It's almost there. So we are winning uh, the situation. Both wreckers are ready. But are almost on the road. For what should be the final round. Keep your fingers crossed. Go a little bit tighter. One more go. Boom out. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. stage. They're all done. Of MSA's recovery. Whoa, hold on. Whoa, hold on. In record cold. That's okay. Keep going, it's in Is one tire down. That's okay. It didn't cause any damage to the truck or to the trailer, no problem. That's it. He's on the road. Feels pretty good to see this thing upright. Let's get that guy out of here. That's good there, eh? That's it. Dundee Monty. Job is done and everybody is tired now. So let's go home and sleep. Let's get out of here. I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm sweaty, I'm hungry. Oh boy, holy macaroni. I am just happy that I can get into my warm bed. It's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, definitely time to go. To the east. God, I need a shovel. The town of Hope is also unusually cold. The weather has come and hit us very, very hard. We are seeing record low temperatures and storms like we haven't seen. On the west side of town, Jamie Davis's hope base. A 
30-ton wrecker is dispatched. You have cold temperatures. The jobs have happened one after another after another. Oh, yeah. We definitely missed the corner, yeah. That's for sure. Greg Mulligan rolls up on scene. It looks like he's tried to slow down and jackknifed. And uh, he's gone through the no post. Oh, he's loaded. So I'll pull somebody's no post out of the way. The rig's driver. Escaped serious injury. That's pretty good. As dusk sets in. The weather is just brutal. It's 70, 80 mile an hour winds. The boss shows up. It has a heavy load in it with a, you know, just a 30 ton wrecker. Hey, Jimmy. I think I need to be there to give him a hand. We'll put a chain on the other side where the tow pin is, I can wrap it around the leaf spring. Yeah, go on each leaf spring on both sides. I'm happy that he's there. We're gonna get this job done a little quicker. You're gonna need air, though. Yeah. Jamie. We gotta take this off. Wants to access an air tank. <laughs> yeah, okay. We release the brake so that this unit will come out just that much easier. And then that tank there, the front one. Yeah. I'll take the airline. It's a path of least resistance. It's going to take some of the pressure off the Mac. Oh, man. It's snowing very heavily. Let's get some air in here. Did it get there, Greg? Yeah, one second. Tough, brutal work. I'm just going to take up the slack here, Jay. Yeah. We're not getting any air. If not. Did you open the valve? Yeah. Airlines are freezing. I'm freezing. Damn it. In hope, Jamie and Greg. No air, buddy, no air. Face a loaded transport. On these jobs, I'm always kind of watching, you know, seeing how Jamie's tackling the wreck. Everything's frozen. My gloves are frozen. Locked up in brutal weather. We've aired the unit up, and the brakes still aren't releasing. It's crazy, cold and stuff, it? It's really feeling like it's gonna be one of those nights here. Let's change these lines around. High line and a low line, yeah. Jamie looks for another way to tip the odds. There's no way that we can release the brakes. It's just gonna be a straight up winch job. What a hang. It's a light record. All right, okay. It's going to struggle to pull that unit out. No, boom it up. It's a 65,000 pound drag. Okay, go, 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 go. For the 30 ton Mac. Yeah, try it. Keep going. You're doing good. There's 70 mile an hour winds. My beard and everything is just frozen over. Yummer. It's about this point where you become comfortably numb. It's like the Antarctic here. I can't believe how cold it is. Okay. All right. Go, go, go. We're done here. And uh, I'm happy to see the back of this wreck. All right, we're good to go. This is what you do for a living. 
you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. Go clear now. To the north. Is the coke open again now? Oh, the coke is closed. Big machines are running around the clock. I'm at the first washout. To restore the Coquihalla Highway. Yep, that's work. After floods. What dedication. We've got some really good talent here for building roads. The highway has been closed for nearly a month. Pop ahead and put it on the edge. In the town of Merritt, transportation officials. We are taking media up here to show them the work going on on the Coquihalla. Have a special day planned. Across the entire corridor, they had sections of lanes that were either fully washed out or significantly undermined. Regional Executive Director Paula Cousins. Everyone's been impacted by this event, and I think it's just really important to see what's happening out there. Speaks to media gathered for their first glimpse at repairs. Our first stop is at Murray Flats. We'll uh, stop up. Betcha. Good to go here. The tour will cover several sites, including three with unique rebuild challenges. Having the Coquihalla down puts a lot of pressure on, so it is imperative that we get the coke open as soon as we can. At stop number one. Murray Flat Lake. A raging river destroyed half a kilometer of road. What a disaster. Now more than a half a million cubic meters of earth has been used as infill. Then we can uh, put some finer material down and, uh, and get some pavement on it. We're going to uh, get everybody back into vehicles and uh, we'll head down to the next site. All right, we're moving. Stop number two. We stop at Bottle Top Bridge. Is a different engineering feat. Bridge. Bridge is gone. That had catastrophic damage. I was there about seven days ago. It was just a big hole in the ground. Wow. Look at that. On the closed coke, media gets a look at flood repairs. Well, this is what we call an MSE wall, a mechanically stabilized earth wall that the, the contractors put in very quickly. We've got some good contractors, some good equipment, and they're the key to the future here. The repair here was to rebuild this embankment, put all the rock armoring on, and get the river back into the location it should be. Bottle Top Bridge, we can now pass uh, traffic over. So the uh, media and the team here today, this will be some of the first traffic that has gone over that bridge. Next stop, yeah. Our next stop is gonna be the last stop that we do. We're heading to uh, Mine Creek now. We'll just uh, shift everyone over into the fast lane here, park on the shoulder. Stay in this lane, everyone, okay? At this site, an overwhelmed culvert system. Oh, we got problems. Led to silt and water on the road. Upgrades are underway. They're putting in significantly bigger uh, culverts and pipes to restore this highway. 
improve the infrastructure. I'm really proud of all of the men and women who have come together to get this work done. And really appreciate the level of effort that our crews are putting in to get that highway open. There's major, major work. What a group of people that would go through hell or high water to be there. One hour south. Perfect weather for a hot tub. And home. Hey, I'll try to do a bit faster. Jamie's stepson and daughter. Oh, is it going? Uh, Brandon's a pretty good hockey player. Surprised he didn't go pro, you know. <laughs> are making the best of the winter chill. Just decided to come out and have some fun. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Take a hot chocolate. It makes you play better, right? I have a great family. We really don't get much time. Why well, do you guys want us to come out in the cold like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been a good one. <laughs> it's a wild year. We've had huge flooding, and now we've had this deep freeze. Like this. Just like that. Wait, let me practice that. <laughs> I think the kids will always remember this year. Oh, that's great. Really? That's what I'm saying, yeah. That's awesome. People need to slow down and live your life. Jeez. You're never going to get those times back. So, you know, when you get a moment like that... Oh, yeah, okay, okay, you had to do it to me. <laughs> it's nice. time on Highway Through Hell. It's catastrophic damage. A hazardous crash. Watch out. Is a high pressure challenge. No, I'm there. For aggressive. A snowy battle. On a punishing road. Bumper to bumper. Never seen this kind of thing happen. And an epic push. We've been backed up. Has all eyes on the coke. 